Oh my god, the summoning spell actually worked. I can't believe it. I thought for sure everything would explode like that one time. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> welcome. I'm sure you have a lot of questions, but let me just play an Uno reverse card and ask you some instead. Do you believe in magic? Well, if you didn't before, I'm sure you do now. At least, because I just summoned you here to my tower through supernatural means. Uh, yeah, take a look. Out the window, we are way above the clouds. No, well, we're not in a basement. Why were you expecting us to be? What's with that look? Don't tell me. Am I ugly? <sighs> oh, I'm so sorry. Is it... <laughs> Is it my elf ears? I mean, if you'd like, I can cut them. Seriously, I'd do anything to make you happy. Oh, I'm not ugly? Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it looks like Alvinia was wrong then. <laughs> That's good. I put so much care into my appearance today. I even brought out my largest wizard hat. Anyway, you're probably wondering what you're doing here. Well, as it turns out, I'm, well, I don't know if I really count, but I guess you could say I'm a wizard. Almost. I'm a bit of a wizard. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that I'm a very lousy wizard, but I am still a wizard. Which means I can cast spells. Not very well, but I can cast them in the right situation. And as it just so happens, the situation in which I can cast spells is related to you. Now, there's a lot of complex magical theory behind this, but I'll give you the simplified version. So things have magic resistance. And if you want to cast a spell on something, you need to overcome that magic resistance. If you want to turn lead into gold, you need to overcome the magic resistance of the lead. You want to turn your neighbor into a newt, well, you need to overcome the magic resistance of your neighbor. And of course, overcoming this magic resistance depends on the skill and talent of the wizard. And as it just so happens, I have neither skill nor talent. <laughs> I basically can't overcome the magic resistance of anything, which means I basically can't cast spells, not even on myself. I can't even overcome my own magic resistance. Suffice to say that it makes me the laughing stock of the elven society. It's part of the reason I haven't left my tower in centuries, actually. <laughs> but, see, that's where you come in. See, you are completely unique. Your utter lack of any magic resistance is astounding. <laughs> Your complete vulnerability to the arcane is... Ooh, and I thought I was a failure, but seriously, pebbles on the road have more magic resistance than you. In summary, you're the only one I can cast spells on, and that's why I brought you here. See, I've been cooped up in this tower for centuries, trying to study my way out of my own ineptitude, but as you can see, that obviously didn't happen. And I've been here all by myself. I haven't even had a conversation in all of this time, and I've gotten so very, very lonely. <sighs> but I can't have any other company than you. I, well, because I'm sure you can tell I'm defenseless too. We elves rely on magic for basically everything, but I can't really cast it. So everyone tends to take advantage of me for it. They bully me. Back at the academy, when they would turn the class frog into cheese, they would blame it on me. But I couldn't really stand up for myself. <laughs> I didn't have the confidence stemming from my own weakness. I didn't even get any cheese out of it. And I really, really think the teacher should have known I was innocent because there's no way I could overcome the magic resistance of the frog. But I guess... They don't get paid enough to care. <laughs> Watching you was the only thing that gave me any happiness with myself. With my divination magic? 
see, when I'd ask my orb to show me something, anything at all, completely at random, it would always show me you, no matter how many times I asked, hundreds of times, out of hundreds of times, proving that you are the only thing I can cast magic on. I'd always watch you. I'd watch you wake up, I'd watch you have breakfast. Well, not nearly as often as you should have, but I... I'd watch you all throughout the day. I, I'd even watch you go to sleep. And of course, even long after that, just smiling to myself. You are the proof that I'm not a complete failure. And you're the only one that makes me feel like I'm not alone because you're like me, helpless, vulnerable, with your lack of magic resistance. I mean, how should I put this into human terms? Um... It's like everyone in the world has a gun except you. That is literally how vulnerable you are. <laughs> Which is why you're the only one who I can be with. Because you won't take advantage of me. Because you can't. Because you're the only one I can defend myself from. You're the only person who is my equal. I if I was with anyone else, I would be a slave in the relationship. Wait! Where are you going? Don't go to the stairs. You can't leave. I, I, I put a curse on you. When you're outside this tower, you will constantly be reminded of the most embarrassing moment of your life. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You wouldn't want that, now would you? Just take a seat. Preferably on the bed. I put a curse on you that makes you find the bed twice as comfortable so you never want to leave. Now, I think you'll quite like it here with me. See, since I can cast magic on you, there are many ways I can benefit from you as well. I have spells to care for your skin, to burn your calories, or gain for that matter. I even have spells to keep you cool on the hottest days or warm on the coldest nights. And if you'd like, I even have a spell that will make you forget your most embarrassing memory. So, why don't you just stay here with me? I've been watching you this entire time, so I already know everything about you. It's like I'm an intimate friend, and you wouldn't abandon a friend, <laughs> now would you? Of course, I'd like to be more than friends. I'm a bit late to the party when it comes to getting married, after all. <laughs> and since I know everything about you, all that's left is for you to know all about me. And I absolutely must tell you everything. I haven't had a conversation in forever, so I'll be overjoyed to talk your ears off. <laughs> your lovely, cute human ears. But perhaps we should leave that for tomorrow. <laughs> it's getting late, so we should get some rest. Oh, I'll just tell you now, though. There's only one bed, so we'll have to share. Guess we're going to be really good friends. Hmm?